is a house where no one should live. The woman lived here before you was nuts. Wouldn't be surprised if someone just got fed up and off her. She was my aunt. Heart of gold, though. What's up, everyone? Today we'll be discussing the horror comedy House from 1986. I watched this movie about a billion times growing up. It was in the mix with other favorites like Gremlins, Ghostbusters, and reruns of Three's Company. Are you kidding? That's a great likeness. That? <laughs> <laughs> it's just a blob. Oh, don't fool me. I'd recognize your mother any place. <laughs> House featured tons of old school 80s practical effects. The movie had it all. Evil Dead inspired animatronics, creepy ass makeup, and kick ass stop motion animation. And all of it was mashed together into a glorious spectacle of ghosts, goblins, closet monsters, and all kinds of weird shit. How could anyone not love this? Now the question is, does this horror comedy still hold up? Let's get into it. Please note, this review will contain spoilers, but only at the end. I'll let you know when the spoilers begin. House was directed by Steve Miner and produced by Sean S. Cunningham, with music by Harry Manfredini. All famous for their work in the Friday the 13th movies. Ethan Wiley wrote the screenplay based on a Twilight Zone inspired short story from Fred Decker. That alone should tell you this should be good. The movie starred William Catt, who's best known for his roles in Carrie and The Greatest American Hero. But hardcore Star Wars fans may know William Catt as the guy who could have played Luke Skywalker in Star Wars, alongside Kurt Russell as Han Solo. The Empire must have gotten here first. The planet has been completely blown away. This would have taken a thousand ships with more firepower than I've ever seen. There's a lot more going on in House than meets the eye. But you do have to give it a chance. It starts a little slow. Once it gets going, the movie's a ton of fun. It's far more than cheap jump scares and shit going bump in the night. House is about Roger Cobb, a writer and war vet who inherits his childhood home after his aunt hangs herself. Roger has lots of personal demons. He has hints of PTSD due to horrible experiences in his past. He's divorced from his wife. And worst of all, his young son has gone missing. When the movie opens, Roger's basically just coasting on the success of his earlier work. Instead of giving his fans what they want, meaning a new horror tale, he insists on writing about his experiences in the Vietnam War. Ironically, Roger's wartime experiences were actually a true horror for him. Rather than simply sell us to see Stan's home, Roger decides to move in. On the surface, he claims he needs solitude and a quiet place to focus on writing his book. But of course, the story takes some unique turns that leads to a decent amount of spooky moments. There's nothing really terrifying in this movie. The horror ranges from creepy to mildly cheesy. But that was intentional. Once the evil house has Roger, it doesn't intend to let him off that easily. He's put through hell. We also get some legit comedic moments. This is a horror comedy after all. The most notable funny bits were handled by the nosy neighbor Harold, as played by George Wendt, from Cheers fame. There were also some funny moments thanks to the sexy neighbor lady. What's under the plastic? A sapling? A sapling, yes, it's a, an apricot tree. Oh, I used to come and swim here when your aunt lived here. I hope you don't think I'm imposing on you. And who can forget the timeless severed hand spit into the toilet routine? That one never gets old. When I was younger, what drew me to this movie were the creatures. For the most part, the old school practical effects still hold up. Not bad for a movie that's almost 40 years old. We get a great assortment of awesome practical effects designed by FX veteran James Cummins, who was also involved in movies such as Strange Invaders and The Thing. Mark Sullivan handled the stop motion. His work can be seen in a brief segment that featured a winged monstrosity that tormented Roger as he dangled in a black void. The movie also has a legit jump scare that was something that made me crap my pants when I was younger. What are you doing with that gun? Nothing. I'm... Sandy. I do want to at least briefly discuss spoilers, so feel free to stop here if you haven't checked this movie out and you still want to see it. Okay, so... Richard Maul was goddamn awesome as Ben, Roger's ex-military buddy. The twist is that Ben was the big bad all along. As a kid, I probably didn't connect the dots and think Ben was behind the kidnapping of Roger's son. That's pretty messed up. But, I get it. Roger actually left him there to die. And, Ben was tortured. So he had a legit beef with Roger. 
Zombie Ben was a great villain. Lots of personality, very tricky, and he was very threatening. Now I'm gonna kill your little boy unless you kill yourself. No! Daddy! It's finally over, Roger. You've got no chance. <laughs> Between dealing with the insane house and trying to get back his son, Roger obviously went through hell, so I felt like the happy ending was pretty well earned. The rules of this house did seem a little murky for me. I had to think about it. My take is that the house in the movie was thriving on dark and negative energy. I think this particular house, for whatever reason, is pure evil. It feeds off Roger's inner demons and creates a unique hell for him. For an R-rated 80s movie, it's not nearly as gory as other R-rated movies of its time. Overall, it's actually pretty tame. I still dig this movie. There are a few cheesy dated bits here and there, but overall, it's a fun ride and probably a good introduction to horror. I recommend it. I give House 4 out of 5 severed hands.